Hello again, everybody. This is Derek, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of a painting tutorial on U.S. Airborne Paratroopers uh, World War II D-Day paint scheme because their uniforms did change from the 1942 to the 1943 uh, jumps, jumpsuit. Uh, the 42 jumpsuit is what they used at D-Day. Uh, the 43 was used during Market Garden and beyond, but uh, the 42 was a very light khaki, right? So um, I'm going to paint that for you guys today. I'm using... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint all six of these models, not these guys, uh, but I'm going to paint all these, all six of these for you guys today. Uh, and these are all like NCOs. Uh, there's a lot of, like there, there's a couple of, there's a rifle there, there's Thompson's, and then there's a couple of uh, carvings right there. But we're going to go ahead and uh, paint these. These are forged in battle. Uh, there might be a little editing between colors and things like that for dry times, uh, but if there is, I'll just let you know. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I want you to know is yeah, I prime these guys with the Rust-Oleum Perfect Gray. It's an extremely light gray, as you can see. All right, so the first color we're going to use is AK's Decomposed Flesh. All right, now I'm using Decomposed Flesh uh, because I want my jumpsuits to be extremely light. Well, I don't mean, ex well, I don't mean extremely might be a little, might be a little too harsh. You'll see that there is a, a tendency to make the jumpsuits a darker color. And I think that comes from the TV or movies. Uh, if you watch Band of Brothers or uh, some others, you might, they use filters on the film that make the, gr you know, uh, add like a green, dark brown tone to the jump uniform, and uh, in reality, it it isn't as dark as what you see in these TV slash videos. I actually own a copy or a, a copy. I own a set of 1942 uh, jump uniform. And I referenced my own uniform for my color palettes. And uh, it's lighter than what uh, you would expect. And it's not because it's faded either, uh, because it's brand new. But uh, it's... So I'm using decomposed flesh. This is a... This is the, out of all my paints, this was the closest to the actual color of the uniform. Now, I will point out that I, I am going to wash this with a, with a soft tone at the end, and it will darken this uniform and give it a little bit of a brown tint uh, on top of that. So think of this as just like the initial undercoat because uh, the wash will lighten your paint job. Now I'm hitting all of the uh, uniform, uh, not really concerning myself with the boots or the helmet or the flesh. I'm hitting everything else. And it's just basically just use a large brush and just hitting the entire thing. And you notice I'm kind of pushing, trying to get down into all the different nooks and crannies. 
All right, so we'll have to let this sit just for a moment before I can move on to the next color, which is going to be the boots. All right, the next color we're going to be using is MIG's Atom Line. I'm using their rot brown or red brown. Now, paratroopers of the time had a unique color of boot. It wasn't um, the same color as the rest of the army. It had a little bit more red in it. And again, it's okay if I overpaint the base because I am going to um, block and texture and everything else the base. So their figure base will be covered. But do be careful not to get it on the uniform or you'll have to go back in and fix it. But luckily with, the, with these uh, forged in battle models where the uniform tucks into the boot, there's a sizable blouse. So it makes it real easy for you not to mess up. Now, you can use this technique on any 15 millimeter um, or possibly even 28 millimeter models. Just be careful. Take your time. Now I put six models on a popsicle stick. That way I can do an assembly line. Uh, usually when I do popsicle sticks, uh, six to eight models on a stick and uh, I'll start with the first model, work my way down the stick, and then when I get to the last model, the first model should be dry, so then I can move on to the next color. But that's not always true. So just be careful. Okay, so now I'm double checking my work to make sure I didn't miss a spot like under that boot that is sticking up. It's the part where the boot and the blouse meet. There's like these little pockets of holes, gaps in the paint. And voila, we got their boots done. All right, now we're going to make a jump to light flesh, an AK color, light flesh. I find to be a really good color for my infantry models. Now, again, I'm not really paying attention to painting over the lines. You know what I mean? Outside, when I'm painting the, uh, the face, uh, if I get it up on the helmet, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I am trying to avoid painting it on the uniform. So I'm using upward strokes usually. So it will paint the flesh and uh, maybe get a little on the helmet and that's perfectly fine. Now in World War II, well in D-Day, World War II, the majority of our paratroopers jumped in with these camel skin gloves. Uh, mainly so that they could grab the risers and protect their hands in the jump. So some of these soldiers might have those gloves on. Um, I don't see... Okay, that guy looks like he might have the gloves on. They all might have the gloves on because they're giving me a couple of lines at the cuff. Okay, so on this group, I'm just going to remove the gloves by painting their hands uh, flesh tone. And it's okay if uh, you get some flesh tone on the rifle because you haven't painted the rifle yet or the submachine gun or the carbine. All right, so let me get all six of these, I guess 12 hands. And again, I don't know why I'm trying to be careful. The only thing I need to not put it on is the uniform. Uh, but if I get it on the weapon, it's okay because I haven't painted the weapon yet. 
do one figure at a time. You know, this guy's got a hand cradling. Okay, all the hands are done. Faces are done. All right, the next color we're going to go with is your AK Olive Drab Base. Now, this Olive Drab Base is what you're going to paint your helmets. And this is where, if any of the flesh got up onto the helmet, this is where you would fix any of those overpaintings. Now, some of these helmets have scrim which is basically just sandbag material that they cut up into strips and uh, wove it into their, or tied them onto their camo netting on their helmet to break up the, uh, the silhouette of the helmet. Uh, don't worry about that. Just paint olive drab over the entire thing we'll come back to the scrim later make sure you get it all the way to the edge of the helmet without hitting the face or the uniform if if the helmet is tilted back or tilted to the right like that rifleman his helmet is tilted all the way to the right where he's leaning leaning over and uh, looking down the sights but most of these their helmets are tilted up so much that the backside is resting on the nape of their neck. Okay, now with the helmets all done, again, I'm going to go in and double check my work and make sure I didn't leave any or fail to cover certain spots. Okay, all the helmets with olive drab are done. All right, now we're getting into the fun. We're going to use AK's canvas tone on their LBE and pouches. And if you don't know what an LBE is, it's an abbreviation for what's called load bearing equipment. It's basically the pistol belt, the shoulder straps, and like ammo pouches and canteen covers, that kind of stuff. That is an LBE. So I'm using a Abtong 502 brush. Uh, this is a 50. Now in World War II, the US LBE had a V-shape attachment in the front. It came down and then split into two attachments uh, in the front. So if the model has that, be sure to um, utilize it. Now these two guys on the end, they have little map, map cases. I'm painting that with this canvas as well. Um, if there's a canteen on these models, which 90% of them do have that, I'm painting the canteen cover with this. Now this guy's got a Thompson magazine pouch. I am not painting it with this canvas tone. This guy looks like he's carrying a grenade pouch. It's basically a or, or I guess it could be additional magazines. Thompson magazines fit perfectly into the grenade pouch, but I think it was officially called a grenade pouch. Okay, right now I'm kind of jumping from figure to figure, just hitting things as I see them. And then what we'll do is I'll go back over it and make sure I didn't miss anything. If your paratroopers had any leg straps, I would paint them with this color, the canvas. Uh, these paratroopers don't appear to have any leg straps. They don't appear to have back straps either. Okay, this guy does. Usually, if they're wearing the musette bag on their back, it's actually clipped in 
to their LBE uh, shoulder straps. Now the two on the end there, they've got a musette bag, but it's being slung using its own sling. Okay, so that's all the straps. All right, the next color we're gonna go with is beige brown. Now, beige brown is only going on the rifle and not the submachine guns. The wood that's on a Thompson is actually a different color than most rifles. Kind of a kind of a chestnut color. But we'll get into that when we get to it. Right now I'm just painting the rifles and the carbine. Well, I guess there's one rifle and two carbines with beige brown of trying to avoid the hands that I've already painted and no need to paint the sling because we will be coming back to that in a moment. Now the front part of the carbine is a metal barrel and the back part is a folding stock which is also metal so the only part of the carbine that really needs to be painted wood is the middle part. Um, and in, in, in the biz, we call that the furniture. So the wood furniture on the rifles is beige brown. So for the Thompsons, we're going to be using red brown from AK. And in this case, I just paint the entire weapon with it, even the magazine. I just paint everything. What it does is it gives the entire weapon a good darker brown, kind of like, think of it like a base coat, because I am still going to be going over it with other colors. And on, on this scale of a figure, Getting to the furniture of a Thompson is sometimes pretty difficult. And a Thompson's got three pieces of furniture. It's got a pistol grip, got a buttstock, and then it's got a foregrip. And those are all separated. But by just painting the entire thing, you eliminate the need to worry about it. Okay, so all the all three of the Tom whoops. All three of the Thompsons now have all their furniture, well, their entire weapon, completely covered in this darker brown. Got to make sure I hit the buttstock on this guy. It's tucked under his arm. Okay, those are all good. All right, so the next color we're going to use is Vallejo's model color, Red Leather. Uh, red Leather, I'm going to use for the chin straps. And also, if your model has any uh, pistol holsters. So, we look, and I notice this guy is carrying a pistol on his holster. So, he's good to go with a pistol holster. This guy has one as well. I think these are all officers or NCOs, so they're all going to have it. Except for maybe the rifleman, who does not. Another pistol holster. All right, and then we go for the chin straps. A lot of these guys like to have their chin straps dangling. The old adage is, you know, unbuckle your chin strap or a concussion of an explosion will pull your head off. So just be conscious of which models have dangling chin straps and which ones don't. Okay, going back over it. Making sure I didn't miss anything, especially on the holsters. Making sure I got not just the top of the holsters, but the sides. Okay, the next color we're going to go with is U.S. Gators Brown. Uh, it's actually a little lighter than what it should be. Um, but that's fine, because remember, we are going to wash these, and it's going to lighten everything up. So the U.S. Gators... I'm actually going to put it on their musette bag. And 
You could leave the musette bag, the uh, original decomposed flesh, uh, because that probably would be an accurate color. Uh, and you could just leave it like that. But I like putting a lighter tone on the musette bag to make it stand out, to make it um, a variant, a lighter shade. It'll make it'll make the musette bag, you know, just pop. Okay, and don't forget these two have these musette bags slung under their arm using the musette bag sling and don't forget to paint the actual sling itself same color and then okay let me get the front side edge of these musette bags now i'm also painting on these thompson wielding ncos or officers i'm painting their thompson magazine pouches with this u.s gator brown because it'll make those pouches pop or stand out oh here we go i was like i thought there was a guy back here that had some ammo pouches as well okay so that's good all right, so one of the next colors I'm using is Gun Metal from War Paints, which is an army painter color. So on the carbines, I'm painting the entire barrel. Now there is a technique where you could paint uh, the metal parts of your weapons black and then only paint maybe some highlights with the metal. That does work, but I like just painting the entire barrel with the metal because because that gun metal is extremely dark as it is, painting the magazines. And if you can see the folding stock, paint it as well. All right, now on the rifle, I only usually paint the very tip of the rifle. Sometimes I'll paint the ejection port. Okay, we paint the entire magazine of a Thompson. And then uh, the very front tip of the Thompson, which doesn't have the furniture covering it. That's not where we stop. Then I paint a, a line across the top where the barrel resides it's exposed and then I paint the rear chamber which is a fairly sizable blocky area in the back of the Thompson metallics are done okay so let me take a look at this these guys make sure everything was painted that needs to be painted all right so we're gonna let this we're gonna let this sit for just a just a few seconds and then we're going to go ahead and mix up a wash and wash these guys all right we're coming back to us gators brown uh i forgot to do something so we're just going to go ahead and touch touch it right now we're doing the uh medicine pouches if there are any and then we're also going to do any scrim if there is any so we look at the helmets to see if they have a medicine pouch. That guy does. So be careful if you're not familiar with uh, placement of these bandage pouches. Uh, a lot of soldiers will put it on the front of their helmet. Some will actually put it on the side of their helmet. So just look around and see if you can find it. And then if you see any uh, canvas tied up into the helmet, go ahead and hit those as well. Okay, the next color we're going to be using is actually Soft Tone. It's a, it's a wash that I have a special mix. 
I actually add some additive to it. Now this additive is like one part flow aid additive and four parts water. So it's mostly water, but it does have this flow aid mixed in with it. And then I'll put 10 drops of soft tone and five drops of the additive to get me my wash. And then what I do is I just apply this wash liberally all over the entire model. And I might not have mixed enough. It's acting like I didn't mix enough. But we'll see. We'll keep going. If I need more, I'll mix more. And it goes over the entire model. Boots, uniform, pouches, helmet, weapon, everything. Front and back. Okay, that was actually like the perfect amount. Now, if you see the wash puddling up or pooling up anywhere specific, you, you know, dry your brush out a little bit and then just draw out some of the wash. You want it to puddle up in some areas, but in others you don't. All right, so now they're washed. Now, before um, you can actually see the results, we're going to need to let this dry. And uh, these washes take about 30 minutes or so to dry. So um, I'll be back with the next step in 30 minutes. All right, All right. now that the wash has thoroughly dried, actually, um, after I washed it, I went to bed. And then, uh, so seven hours later, it's fully dry. It would have been dry after 30 minutes to an hour anyway. Uh, but now we're going to do some what I call original highlighting. Um, we're going to start off with our decomposed flesh. Now, what I mean by original highlighting, I'm actually using the original color as the highlight. Um, there's only a couple of places that I'm going to uh, actually highlight just to bring out some edges. One of them is the bottom of the jacket. Just a little bit of a highlight on all of these guys. Trying to avoid um, the dark line that was created by the wash. You want the wash to still have an effect. And if I just repainted everything, then you would be getting rid of that effort. Now, if there's any large flat areas like this guy's butt, I'll just touch a little bit of it just to give me um, and, and just to highlight it. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm only touch or trying to only touch the top of the area to give um, a lighter tone than what the wash did mainly just uh, as if sunlight was striking it but but i'm going to tell you right now this step is unnecessary um, i find that sometimes unnecessary steps will allow for uh, wonderful results. Okay, now usually I'll hit like shoulders and elbows. Uh, if an arm is raised like that, I'll usually only hit the forearm or the upper arm. Whichever one, again, would be flat, no, um, no wrinkles, it's pulled tight and I only do the top of it or try to you know basically I'm working with the folds of the uniform to give the impression that the Sun is shining off of it and these models have quite a bit of sunlight or I should say wrinkles what am I trying to say um, 
All right, now on the pockets, I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll just do like one side of the pocket. Don't forget your knees. Okay, these guys are beautiful. Okay, there's only one more highlight that I want to do, and that is with the US Gator Brown on the top side of the musette bag. Right there where it's flat and the sun would reach it, I just basically put a, a stripe of sunlight trying to avoid the flap. You don't want to paint the flap because the wash successfully uh, darkened that. All right, the next and final step on these guys, before we zoom in and show you everything, I'm using AK's Ultra Matte uh, Brush-On Varnish. Uh, this can be used with an airbrush, uh, but brushing on, you get so much more control. All right, before we move on, there was a couple of things that I had missed, and I want to make sure I go back and correct this before we do the sealant. The sling of the rifle uh, should be the US Gators brown as well. Um, it's lighter than the decomposed flesh and it'll make that sling really stand out. All right, so now with this AK Ultramat, I just go ahead and Brush it onto my figure. I'm trying to get a complete coat over the entire model. Right, I'm hitting the weapon, the helmet, pack, boots, the jumpsuit, everything. And don't worry if it uh, bunches up or or uh, settles down into the crevices and cracks. You can just use your brush to move it around a little bit. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is don't worry about it too much because it shrinks when it dries and it disappears into the cracks. And, cracks. Uh, and this is also a good sealer for your paint. Uh, it's a protective coating as well as a, uh, I found that, and this is just a little anecdote for me, depending on where you live, uh, spray dull coats might be a better, faster way for you. Um, I found that in Tennessee, and at least in the Clarksville area, at least uh, north of Nashville, um, I tend to have uh, a higher humidity level than maybe other areas in the country. And dull coats in my area, if it's not temperature controlled, like inside with a with a uh, air conditioner if, if I spray it and leave it outside to dry uh, there's a tendency for the spray on dull coats that's either Tamaya, Krylon, uh, Testers all of these dull coats and I've tried many brands have a tendency to to turn white. Uh, the humidity in the air gets into your dull coat and uh, discolors it. And then what that does is it'll discolor your model, ruining it. Uh, and so I searched far and wide for a better method. Uh, and I found, because the tester's dull coat is 
excellent, it really dulls out a model. It makes it, it takes 100% of the sheen away. Um, and it's always my favorite, it has always been my favorite. But I have to just be very careful of when I use it. Uh, but when I found this AK Ultramat, it uh, it has no odor, so there's no reason why you can't use it inside. And I can control it. I can put it where I want it. So if I have a, a shiny area of a model that I want to keep shiny, I can actually avoid putting any of the dull coat on that shiny area. Uh, it also is fast drying. I think this dries in about... 10 minutes so, so what we'll do is i'm gonna put this down we'll let it dry for about 10 minutes i'll come back to it and we'll look at the results i'll do uh, i'll do a zoom in and we'll we'll evaluate it and then one more color that i want to add is i'm using the mig ammo uniform green I'll be using this on their reinforced knees and elbows. So basically on these paratroopers there is a little square of canvas that's sewn into the knees of the jumpsuit and the elbows. And that's to basically pad the the paratrooper from when he has to uh you know crawl on the ground now it's only like about a about the size of uh, a u.s dollar it's it's only about six maybe six to eight inches by about four inches wide now on these forged in battle models, uh, it's easier to see on some knees and some of the other knees, you don't even see it. So I'm just painting it in as if it was there. It goes up a little bit on the forearm and a little bit on the upper arm. Now this was a very distinct D-Day addition. You wouldn't see these gussets or supports. Uh, you wouldn't see them during like Market Garden or the Bastogne campaigns. Now if you were painting Pathfinders, basically you would do everything that I did but then you would you would take some oily black and thin it down and and splotch it all over the uniform as kind of a makeshift camouflage because a lot of the pathfinders took engine oil and stained their uniforms before the jump okay so we got all the elbows all the knees okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to adjust the camera we're going to zoom in and we're going to take a look at some of these models now, I'm not going to base these up or put them on any stands for you. Uh, everyone has their own way of basing, and you have your own technique for like grass or foliage or what have you. Uh, so just use whatever you normally use. But. Um, I'm planning on using this 
with my O group army. So if you want, you can stay tuned. Yeah, you can stay tuned to my channel and I will gladly show my progress with my O group paratroopers. Uh, these are all like part of a command element and I didn't want to base them up until I figured out exactly which figures are going on which bases. All right, so these are the paratroopers. So if you like this video, be sure to like it and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and hit the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I upload any new videos. Also, uh, you should check out my eBay store because I sell miniatures like this uh, on there and you might be able to find a good deal. Plus, if you have any armies that you need painted, you should contact me at my email address where I'm, I do commission painting. All right, so thanks for coming out and checking out this video, and I will catch you in the next one.